Master Tavern Keepers, History of the Old World. Right then, now we have a bit of fire in our bellies. I think it's time that we talked about Albion. Yeah, yeah, please. Master Alchemist, I am eager to hear of your homeland. Oh, why, certainly. Now, to be honest, before I met you, Cedric, I, like most, believed Albion to be naught but a myth. A mystery to cover up a lack of knowledge. One of those shared lazy delusions and conspiracies. Oh, like the collective denial in the Empire that the rat may exist that so many subscribe to, in place of taking time to properly investigate and invest in the world as it is. But Albion is real. Aye, it most certainly is. The place of my birth exists as much as this table about which we three sit does. But unlike this here table, it is both mundane, yet magical, dull, yet magnificent, boring, yet full of power and mystery. It is a place like any other, built on rock and earth, draped in forest land and fen, but it's also a location so suffuse in magic that the very nature of all that stands there and the peoples that dwell therein has changed and realigned under the power coiled within her bedrock. But for the everyday folk of Albion, this is simply their reality. What would be described as fantastic by those of another land is but a common occurrence. But perhaps we should begin at the very beginning, Cedric. What do you know of the origins of the place of your birth? Ah, trying to keep me on the straight and narrow now, are you? <laughs> you know me too well. Ah, well, I fear the meandering slopes of your mind if I allow you to run free and directionless in your tale-telling. You've all but bewitched me with your weaving tapestries of words too many times for me to uh, fall into that trap once more. Now there is a backhanded compliment worthy of a fellow wordsmith, but it's still a compliment, so I'll take it as that and get on with it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, please, get on with it. My mind is already starting to spin. Ah, well, that might be as a result of drinking so soon after downing that health potion. Here. Why don't you have some uh, more broth, Heinrich? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> but, Cedric, please, begin. Well, my master, the venerable Toothsayer Bede, a far more succinct man than I could ever be, always used to tell it something like this. Long, long ago, in the times before mankind had harnessed the power of fire, eons before the elves took up the bow, and an epoch before the dwarfs dug down beneath the high mountains of the old world, the old ones came unto us, and we forged our world anew and better. Although, oh no, this is a point of disagreement between you and I, Septip, I mean, uh, Master Tavern Keeper. Indeed, for in doing so, they have sowed the eventual seeds of our doom, at least in my humble opinion but also created all we know and hold precious and the means of its salvation even should the world itself be consumed in the conflagration of chaos alas i cannot see beyond the fires of the end times should they come i can only see oblivion in store for us now that is far too a nihilistic interpretation of things yet to pass rest assured that the old ones saw and planned for everything every eventuality and if there is one thing that I learned and internalized above all else, it is this. But it is not an easy thing to impart over an evening's conversation. Anyhow, as I was saying, Albion held a special place in their schemes, as it was a nexus on the uh, geomantic web of ley lines, which you and I have oft discussed, Septimus. Ah, indeed. And whose existence I have had corroborated by the tales of Ibn Jalaba. So you'll hear no naysaying from me. I've even imparted some knowledge of it to the uh, young neophytes. Oh, yeah. But uh, not to me, actually. Oh, have I not, Heinrich? 
Ah, uh, my apologies. Oh, where to begin? Well, at the dawn of our world, it was a far less magical place than it is now. The dependability of rational expectation and the immutable laws of cause and effect ruled the roost. But that is not to say that it was a world bereft of magical energy, but it was but a trickle compared to the deluge that would uh, come down to drown our existence out of existence much later. Ah, indeed, indeed. In these earlier days, this trickle of energy was confined within, or at least as near as to be effectively be, lines of power that crisscrossed the globe. When the old ones came, they built a network of uh, massive menhirs and obelisks, fancy rocks and whatnot, to tap into this resource and amplify it. This done, they then expanded the network to cover every part of the world. These stones were um, nodes of power, and they used them as a means of uh, traveling across the world in an instant through portals and tunnels fed by these air uh, ley lines, as we call them in Albion. Or oh, fault lines in the fabric of reality, as I prefer to call them. But they were also referred to as the uh, geomantic web by the Arabian scholar Ibn Jalaba and the lizardmen themselves. Oh, too many names, Master Tavern Keeper. Are you illuminating this young knight? Or are you trying to confuse him? Ah, well, I... Uh, <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I'm only teasing. Just a bit of banter between close friends. Please continue. Ah, but you're not wrong. Well, my apologies, Heinrich. Anyway, these lines were also used by them to manage those trickles of magic to reshape the world to their own design. Cracking open the single continent that dominated the world and creating the oceans and dragging us closer to the warmth of the sun. Amazing, don't you think? Anyhow, after the great war against chaos, the elves tapped into these layer lines to act as an aid and focus for their great vortex that drained away the uh, excess etheric energy out of our world and robbed the demons of their sustenance. But we will talk about this in the future with the neophytes, Heinrich. So don't worry if some of this goes over your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is quite a mind boggling stuff, to be perfectly honest. Ach, oh, you'll be all right. Just think of it like a series of water pipes. These pipes lead to a great reservoir of energy at its heart. And this energy can be put to good or bad use as it travels along them. And that's about the sum of it. Ah, yes, indeed. But not only did the elves do this, they also created more way stones that acted in the same way as the men here of the old ones. And the dwarves too erected rune-covered edifices to channel the magics that they saw in the very rocks themselves. And this all helped to stabilize the system as a whole. And so did we. I, uh, the people of Albion, I mean. As did some other nations of men, it has to be said. Ah, oh, yeah, to be true. Credit where credit is due. I've come across the tales of many early migrant tribes of men who, upon encountering the elves' waystones, erected their own over existing lines of power. Although, truth be told, many also erected almost as many willy-nilly. Nowhere near ley lines. Some even on deposits of warp stone, corrupting the land further. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I have a question. From what you've said, there is a lot more magic around in the air these days. What are these stones doing exactly now? Not amplifying it, surely. Ugh, by the blood of the old ones, you're not just a pretty face, are you? That is an excellent question. Master Tavern Keeper, do you want to take this one? Ah, yes, no problem. Well, these stones are actually doing the opposite of what was originally intended by the old ones. They draw down the winds of magic and siphon it off to the great vortex in Ulthuan, the de facto heart of the system, and keep our world from being swallowed up by the realm of chaos and devoured by the hungry moors of the dark gods. It is only the vortex that keeps us balanced on the knife's edge of existence and the end times at bay. Like the opening to an upturned bottle of wine, Ulthuan is the ultimate destination for all the raw magic in the world. The vortex drains it out into the ether, 
But as to what will become of this great miasma of fractured energy, for it's split into each of the separate winds of magic, don't you know? Well, that's an uh, unknown quantity. Does it disperse wider and wider, or will it begin to coalesce like grains of sand on the beaches to create new lands, new realms, new spheres of existence? Well, who knows? I heard it said during my training that some of the old ones had foreseen that particular possibility as they scried all the potential schemes of the future and left instructions to their servants if that came to pass. But I know no more than that. By the gods, I've not heard the like of this before. Could it possibly be true? I only know what I was taught. But the schemes of the old ones are not for men. We are but cogs as distant from the hands that turn the handle as we could possibly be. Anyhow, enough of all this conjecture. I've said too much already. Didn't you want to hear about Albion? Oh, bugger. We've gone off at another tangent. Yes, yes we do. But my tankard is empty. I think it's time for another round, gentlemen. Ah, yeah, yeah. Another round. And uh, perhaps uh, some more bros. Ach, music to me ears. For there's a nothing so quick to disappear Than a bowl of broth and a round of beer Oh, a poem, a song. Ach, just a couple of lines from a ditty my cousin, the bard, wrote a few years back now. Ah, uh, still no news on Tiernan then. I am afraid not. Ah, yeah, yeah, the master tavernkeeper told us of his uh, predicament. A predicament I found myself in, as it happens. But uh, I shall be breaking into the Palazzo del Vento on the morrow, so I shall be sure to keep my eyes out for a bard. Oh, really? Thank you. I'm very much obliged. In fact, I'd say that's a cause worthy of a toast. What do you say? All right, all right, hold on to your horses. I'm not as sprightly as I once was. But rest assured, the beer is coming.